Welcome to the Burn Bootcamp Podcast. I'm your host, Morgan Klein, co-founder and CEO, along with my husband and company visionary, Devin Klein. And together with our amazing team, we are gonna help you push past your limits, not just physically in our gyms, but right here, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually on the Burn Bootcamp Podcast. Together, we will take on challenges and break through barriers to transform into the best possible version of ourselves. We are more than a gym. We are a community, your community. Let's Let's go, go, Burn Nation. Hey, what is up, Burn Nation? And welcome back to the Burn Bootcamp Podcast. You are here for a very, very special 9-11 Remembrance episode. Uh, we also launched Burn Bootcamp Meals yesterday. Woo woo! Yes. So we're going to talk a lot nice. about that uh, and Remembrance Day. Uh, and I have some very, very special guests in the building. We have Nicole Odom, uh, who is a former and uh, always will be a graduate of our military, uh, the Navy specifically. She's here today. Welcome, Nicole. And we have Marianne Baltimore, who is here, who is uh, a lifelong police officer service uh, to her community is at the center of her heart. They're going to give some personal remarks in a moment, you guys, but I'm just today, you know, I've been working on these meals more with you for how long have you been working on these meals? Maybe two, two years. Yeah. That's been about, about, right. about two years in the making. Mm-hmm. And, uh, this one is one of my favorites. We're going to talk about it in a little bit, but I just can't talk enough right now about the burnt meals. I know we got to save <laughs> it for our next gotta segment. Got to save for our next so segment, good. but you guys, Oh, I can't wait. So stick around. We're going to talk a lot about it. Uh, Morgan Klein, how are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me today. I'm excited to have you ladies here as well to hear about your experiences. And, you know, this is obviously not a celebration day. It's a remembrance day. So we're going to make sure to do our best in this podcast to to honor that and all of those that have been impacted by 9-11 um, but yeah, we'll balance it with some exciting things happen- happening in the burn world. And like Devin said, our burn meals. So uh, it's the middle of September. It's, you know, we're feeling good. Kids are back in school. We're back in their routine. routine. I, mean, I know we've talked about that a lot. And so uh, coming into, you know, fall and all the holiday season. So I'm just enjoying life right now. So how about you, Nicole? Welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here for the first time. Yeah. Uh, I'm Nicole Odom. I'm um, in our operations department. My teams really kind of structure our learning and development for our franchise partners and their teams. Um, And as Devin mentioned, I'm a Navy veteran. I served from 2000 to 2004. So I'm really honored to be here today to talk about uh, my 9-11 experience and how, you know, my time in the military shaped Mm -hmm. um, just in my life um, and how that continues you know, through my burn experience. So thank you for having me. Yeah, for sure. And we have Marianne Baltimore. Marianne is a dear friend, uh, long-term OG member. She is one of That's the right. first members in Burn Nation, y'all. Mm-hmm. So you have a treat here. And um, uh, Marianne, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Um, Marianne Baltimore, my name. <laughs> um, burn member since, Morgan, I was just talking about with Devin, um, since Statesful. At yeah. Statesville Avenue. Statesville Road. Yes. So yes. parking lot days. The parking yes. lot days. Yeah. Crazy 2012. That, yeah. yeah. That is insane. Um, but then went to Huntersville and then um, now I'm a member at Lake Norman. So I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, I was was also and still am um, part time a Charlotte McElroy police officer. I was I did 30 years. I retired, <clears throat> excuse me, January of 2022. But then mm-hmm. I'm back working at the district attorney's office. And then along with still working um, at Panther Stadium and Memorial Stadium. Still enjoy it. It's still a really good job. I have so many questions about working those games, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) Just all the the crazy stuff that goes on. Marion, that's 12 years at Burn. Thank you for being loyal and helping us build this organization. You've been here longer than most everyone besides Morgan and I. Uh, So, you know, we really appreciate you being here today and just your loyalty and love for Burn and and uh, how you constantly share it with the world. And uh, really excited to dig in uh, how that has really helped you in, in your mental health and you know being in uh, protection and serving our community and all of the uh, dramatic situations that you're a part of. Excited to dive into how Burn has really helped you mm-hmm. uh, personally on that. But before we do that, you guys, I wanna, I wanna actually, I wanna start this with a 9-11 question because on Remembrance Day, you know, I, 
we, when we have these moments in our life that everyone universally recognizes, can remember uh, exactly where they were, what they were wearing, what they were doing at the time. 9-11 is one of those periods of time where you're just, it was so emotionally devastating and emotionally shocking that it, it really just imprinted, uh, embossed uh, that moment in time and the associated emotions on us all. I remember uh, Morgan and I were, we grew up in Battle Creek, Michigan together. We were at Lakeview Junior High School. Uh, and I'll never forget, I was on a bathroom break and um, I had no idea what had happened. And so I came out of the bathroom and another student, our dear friend, uh, Veronica Pirelli, uh, we grew up together. She was walking down the hallway and I saw her at a distance and her face was just completely white. And she was like, did you hear? And I was like, did I hear what? She goes, the planes are crashing into buildings in New York City. I mean, in eighth grade or seventh or eighth grade, I'm like, what? Like, what do you, what do you mean? And so then we go back to our classroom and all the teachers had, there wasn't enough TVs for every classroom. So the teachers were like wheeling TVs into the bigger classrooms and then bringing all the students in. Uh, we shut down any curriculum that was going on. We shut down any or gym or recess or sports or pre whatever it was like everybody just stopped in that moment and we gathered on a TV and I, I'll never forget the silence. Like it was just a bunch of kids that had no idea really what was going on, but we're just at that age where we couldn't believe it. We didn't know the macro effects of in, in a global catastrophe, which was nine 11, but we all knew inherently intuitively, this was not good. And they let school out early that day. And I remember we got sent home. And uh, yeah, I'll never, like most of us, will never forget that day. So I just wanted to give you an opportunity as we're sharing our stories. Morgan, I'll ask you to go next. Remember, that's what this is about. Remember where you were. Remember what you saw. Remember how devastating it was to our country. Remember how our country came together. Remember all of the people that, um, who, whose lives were lost, all of the servicemen and women who sacrificed their own lives willingly, raising their hand, running into the fire to protect others from it, true leaders, true heroes. And it's an opportunity for us all to remember how amazing it is to be an American, but also how this, this country is targeted um, across the world and how sometimes we're bifurcating or polarizing ourselves <laughs> It's like, we don't need to beat ourselves up. We don't need to kick each other when each other are down. There's plenty of other countries out there trying to do that that don't want to see us prosperous. And I'm, you know, that day, 9-11, uh, in, the, in the subsequent years, were some of the most unified times that I can remember as a young adult. Um, and, you know, uh, it's interesting how that tragedy creates such unity. The dichotomy of that is actually really scary to say that there has to be a tragedy in order to create unity. So Morgan, uh, where, where were you at on 9-11? Well, since we went to the same school and, and <laughs> grew up together, I was also at the school that you mentioned. Um, it was actually, you know, since it was first thing in the morning, I was an office assistant during that block. So I was the one that would run like messages to students on the little pieces of paper uh, before they had, you know, the technology that they had today. So, um, you know, we immediately in the office had kind of everyone was panicking and the TVs were turned on. And I didn't understand the magnitude of what was happening. You know, I was I was not old enough to understand that. So I'll just speak to what I remember the country coming together during that time. I remember the unity it felt like. And again, I, I was young, so I don't know what to compare that to. Um, but that is what I miss in our country today is just us coming together and not fighting each other. And so if anything today, that's what I hope we can take out of our conversations. And just as we do reflect on 9-11 and the remembrance of all that sacrificed and uh, but what what it did for our country um, to come together and stand strong together and not tear half of the country down just because you maybe have different political beliefs. And, you know, as we are going into the election season now here in just a sh couple short months, it's 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 sad for me to see um, the divide. Yes. 
yes. in our country. Yeah. So Absolutely. I would love to, as much as I hate that that happened to us on 9-11, I would love to take a, a piece of that chapter um, to remember how we can be stronger when we're all together and we're fighting together. So, yeah. Marianne, uh, what was your 9-11 story? I was, um, I was getting, not that I think about it, I was getting ready to go to work. And I remember my partner from work called me and said, he said, turn on the television. And I remember turning it on and I, watching the second plane mm -hmm. go in and I, I, I automatically just got nauseous and just thought, you know, our, our world just changed mm -hmm. after that. Um, and I remember getting to work and I worked the west side of Charlotte. So we're really close to the airport. And it was just that was the first time forever not hearing any planes coming in. Mm -hmm. And so it and that was just. It was, it was frightening, but it was just, you just thought, okay, what's really going to happen to us? Um, but then after, like Morgan was saying, um, the unifying of everyone coming together after that, the, the, the uh, Yankees game, remember watching, um, was it George Bush, I think, or whatever, but just knowing that we couldn't stop, that, mm -hmm. you know, we weren't going to let anybody stop us. Yeah. Was fantastic. And I, I just really have to agree with what Morgan said. Hopefully, I just feel like we've we've definitely done a 180 from that recently. Then I'm hoping that we can that will turn around um, and we can see that again. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, as far as being a police officer that time, we all bonded together, especially with the fire department because they lost 343 firemen. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was 60 officers that died that day, and we're always we're always pretty close with them anyway. Um, I tried to get a few in there, but they're, they're a bunch of country boys who don't. <laughs> oh yeah. She tried to get a few, they tried to get a few they're on like, the podcast no, today. No, no, no. No. I tried. I was like, yeah. come on. No. <laughs> so they really, they're great guys. They're just amazing, amazing people. But, um, so we really, I think it even made us tighter. Um, but yeah, I can just, mm -hmm. I'm hoping that we can see that again mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Nicole. Um, I was a shiny new ensign in the Navy. I was at um, Naval Air Station Pensacola, and um, I had just gotten medically disqualified from flight school because I throw up in Navy airplanes, and that's a detriment to flying them. <laughs> oh, yes. um, oh, I don't want your pilot <laughs> throwing up. Yeah. No, no it, wasn't, it wasn't fun for anybody. Um, but we, um, I was in an office for what we call stashed ensigns. So it was just anybody who was kind of waiting for orders um, because they either medically disqualified like I did or they didn't have the grades to keep up or they decided not to keep going. And somebody came in and said kind of the same thing, right? Like planes are hitting buildings. And since I, we were at an airbase, I was like, our planes? Our planes are hitting buildings? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so there was a lot of confusion. Um, and we just ended up running into the operations officer's office. It was the only one that had a television um, on in our office building. So we, we all gathered around and watched the TV. And we actually watched the second plane hit. Mm -hmm. um, and it just kind of erupted into chaos from there, like organized chaos. But, you know, being on a military base, there was a lot of emergency protocols that we had to um, follow. So we had to do a muster and we had to make sure we had all of our, um, you know, everybody in our um, squadron was accounted for. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll never forget the next day. Um, you know, it used to be you just you just drove on to base. And um, the next day there were concrete things. And, you know, it took me an hour to get onto base the next wow. day because yeah. so many security measures um, had been put in place. Um, Rightfully so, because we didn't know what was happening. Mm -hmm. um, and my, you know, what I think I remember the most is the way the communications went down. Um, so my first husband was in Washington, D.C. at the time. And just after the Pentagon was hit, just trying to get in touch with him. Mm -hmm. You know, he wasn't stationed at the Pentagon, but knowing just like what could have happened um, and not being able to get through and having that weird like tone in yeah. cell phones yeah. where you're like, what is happening? Yeah. Um, and actually, I was the part of the Pentagon that was hit, I had been stationed in that summer before, um, just waiting to go to flight school. So, you know, it's different rings and the D ring uh, was where I was. And so very, very thankful that I wasn't back there um, when it happened. Mm -hmm. Well, we are definitely going to talk more about uh, you two 
uh, this is really about you, you, you being here and, and Morgan and I are going to get to some questions for you guys in, in a little bit just around um, <clears throat> why you chose to, uh, you know, go into service and why, um, why uh, 9-11 is important to you and how, how you remember it in your, in, in your every day. And we'll, we'll do that in a minute, but I do want to sh uh, shift topics real quick because uh, it, it's very exciting uh, to be releasing the Burn Bootcamp meals. And the Burn Bootcamp meals dropped yesterday um, on 9-10. They are available right now, everybody. Nice. Okay, they're available right now. Now listen, here's why we did meals, all right? Because forever, since the Marianne was in the parking lot days <laughs> and we were having focus meetings outside on a picnic table next to the Red Ant Hill uh -huh. and the broken basketball uh, hoop, remember that? Yes. You know, out there, yep. parking lot, yep. yep. So since those days, we've been teaching uh, our members to meal prep. Okay, to prep your meals that if you don't anticipate your week ahead, uh, if you don't plan uh, and you don't prepare, then you're going to fail. Okay, and you're not going to be able to wake up every day and let the day get after you because you will then put your nutrition on the back burner. And so we all know that meal prepping is important, but what's stopping the vast majority of us from actually doing it? Time, children, yeah. children, yeah. <laughs> responsibilities, yeah. you know, all of the, all of the, um, all of the responsibilities that we have as adults and the limited amount of time that that gives us back to properly meal prep. We wrote a book in which we teach you how to do it in like two to four hours a week, but that's still two to four hours a week. Mm -hmm. All right. So the burn bootcamp meals, uh, are now prepackaged, fresh, never frozen, vacuum sealed. They, uh, each one of them have 30 grams uh, of protein plus, uh, they're under 500 calories, so four to 500 calories. The macros in each meal are specifically tailored for burn boot camp workouts, okay? You're going to have strength-based meals, really, really high protein, and you're going to have more conditioning-based leaner meals like our performance sweet potato um, uh, chicken dish. And the convenience, like I said, is key with all of these things, you guys. You can go right on the website, right on app, order now, Morgan. What else do we need to know about meals? They're, they're here. They are ready to go. They come in, what, uh, six packs, 12 packs. Do your thing. <laughs> like, are you going to say all of it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm missing um, something. I yes. always know I'm missing something. Uh, so, yes, like Devin said, you can go to our site right now under our shop, and you'll have access to these meals. They come in six packs. They come in a 12-pack. And you can put it on auto ship where you're going to receive a 5% discount. So if you put it on auto ship, you can decide the cadence that you want that to be, whether that's every week, every two weeks, once a month, and you can cancel at any time. So there's no contracts, no obligations. You just have to make sure you cancel before that next order is packaged. So, you know, if you were to order on a Wednesday, uh, you're not going to receive your meals until the following week. So we have all that information on the website, but our kitchen is truly fresh. Like I have visited our, our kitchen it's in Omaha, Nebraska. We are partnering with another company to build these meals. And very few things actually hit a freezer. So it comes right off the truck and they start preparing it. They start cooking it. And then as Devin mentioned, they put it right through the line. It's vacuum sealed and it's delivered fresh to you. It's never frozen and it's good on the shelf for two weeks. So once you receive them um, in ice packages directly to your door, you can have them in your fridge for two week shelf life. So it's super convenient. Um, and, and, um, the, the, one of the best things about this is our franchise partners don't have to hold inventory. So we know that there's some locations out there that are working with some really fantastic meal companies. And we're so thankful for that. Uh, but even just the, the step of making sure you can order them and get them in the gym and pick them up, we eliminate that for you. It goes right to your doorstep and then you can put them right into your fridge and eat them. So we've loved them. Devin and I have been the ultimate testers of these meals. Our children have been the ultimate testers of this meal. Um, but we have been testing it with HQ and then members and franchise partners for the last 16 weeks, uh, just to really perfect the taste, the quality, the, the breakdown in those macros, and then the ordering process all the way down to the delivery process. So that's my spiel. Go give them a try. Uh, they're delicious and let us know what you think. I can't wait. I'm yeah. definitely going to try this. Highly I, recommend teriyaki meatball. I guess meatball. I'm behind. Yes, yeah. teriyaki meatball is yeah. my favorite. Um, okay. Rise and grind scramble is on my breakfast favorite. Okay. I also like the chicken Alfredo. So all of the, there's a couple pasta options 
And they're all made with chickpea pasta. So yeah. that increases the protein content of and you it. You can't tell either. Like no. usually if mm -hmm. we cook it at home, you can tell. Yeah. But our kitchen, uh, it, they make some fire chickpea pasta. So yeah. we're very excited for it. If you did a double scoop of afterburn in the morning, that's 43 grams. And if you did 30, 30, 30, let's just say on average, um, the chick, the power chicken parmesan is 44 uh, grams of protein. Let's just call it, let's lowball and say 30. That means that's about 150 grams of protein uh, in three meals and a double scoop of afterburn per day. You add a bar, an afterburn bar at in uh, like maybe like midnight when, you know, some certain type of person gets up to to snack in the middle of the night. And hey, that's got 17 grams of protein. Hey, now we're talking. Okay. We're, we're, we're trying to provide you uh, a solution for both whole food meals and supplements in which when you eat it, when you eat in uh, those uh, burn nutrition um, products in any combination, you're very likely to have a, a high efficient amount of protein in your body. So, and they taste <sighs> bursting great. at the seams. Yeah. I cannot yeah. wait. Yeah. Woo! They do. They taste right. good, and yes, I, taste I do so think good. I'm biased. But we're going to continue to rotate our menu. Um, I'm not going to say how often because I, I think that's going to change here and there. But we're going to continue to make sure it's not the same stuff because that's another thing about meal prep that. I would always fall into like, I'd be really good at meal prepping and, but I always would make the same things. And I'm pretty much a creature of habit, but there comes a point where you're like, Oh, I don't want to eat this again. <laughs> so it's been nice to have this variety and variety that has good macros and it's always protein first, which, you know, at burn Boot Camp, if you've been listening to this podcast, uh, we really encourage you to get at least a hundred grams of protein in every day. That's going to help build your lean muscle. Um, you know, help with your metabolism if you are trying to, if you have weight loss goals and, and then also under 500 calories, these aren't super heavy where, you know, you're eating them and then you're feeling that energy slump. So but you we're excited for you to try. No, I, yeah. I, I yeah. I am definitely going to for sure. I get tired of cooking. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So sometimes you it depends, it. you know, sometimes I like it and then sometimes yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm yeah. not into this. Exactly. So this exactly. is a great option uh, for the in-between. And we're going to teach you guys how to make them all too. That was one thing I wanted to do. I was like, I'm not just, we're not just going to, we're not just going to put out some meals and say, Hey, buy this. I'll also teach you how to make it. If you still want to make it like, it's going to be right there for you. So Nicole, you've uh, been on the alpha or the beta on these. Uh, I was on both alpha and beta. Oh, so yeah. give us your, give us your opinion, uh, on the alpha and the beta. How did your burn nutrition experience go? So I've tried a lot of different kind of meal prep services factor and hello fresh and um we have a local company here called clean eats and mm -hmm. it always tastes like you're eating processed food mm -hmm. right and yeah. um it never tastes as good as if you made it fresh and i was so surprised with how fresh and good and flavorful mm -hmm. they were right like the chicken wasn't bland yeah. and the teriyaki meatballs had real sauce and real flavor um and your girl can eat and like i still felt full mm -hmm. afterwards and didn't feel like i had to supplement with a snack or or anything that wasn't part of my meal plan um and what i you know lunch is always my hard thing <laughs> i never know what to have for lunch yeah. and i'm usually you know kind of grinding away i don't like to leave my desk i don't like to you know yeah. i got stuff to do yep. um and so it was real nice to just pop into the kitchen put it on for like two and a half minutes mm -hmm. and and i was good to go um so so yeah, highly, highly recommend it. Yeah. It will be part of my staple diet for sure. Yes, yes. Marianne, you looking forward to giving them a shot or what? One hundred percent. Yeah. Like I was saying, it's. I've been really trying to step up with the meal prep, but there are days I just don't want to do it. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yes. for sure. So absolutely, and like Nicole was saying, I I liked some of the the ones I've tried them, but you're right. It, it did kind of have a certain taste. Mm -hmm. So it's just that weird um, aftertaste, right? Yes. 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 yes and so with, sure. with the auto ship, the meals end up being a little bit under $12 per meal. Oh, and you know, yeah. if you think about going through fast food and oh. today, or even yeah. stopping at a whole foods and getting yeah. a, a hot bar, I mean, you're, you're going to at least yeah. spend that money. So uh, that includes shipping. And again, that's right to your doorstep. So yeah. we will make sure to link the direct um, link to our shop. You guys can give it a try. In, in my research and development for the burn meals, um, I went, well, this is, this is how I'm masking this excuse. I went to Jimmy John's and got <laughs> a large sub from Jimmy John's and a Diet Coke for $12.89 or something like that. So this is cheaper than stopping yeah. at some random fast food place to get a meal and it's way yeah you're not going to get as many calories for that dollar but the quality of calories is way better so I 
You don't feel all, gross all the afterwards. Things, all mm-hmm. the things. I can't wait. Got to get you some meals, okay? You take them to work. I take them to yes. work. Yeah. Take them to work. All right, we have some new locations coming, everybody. Uh, location 409 Leon Springs, Texas, Canyon West. They just opened, making their mark on Texas. Um, listen, they are our newest franchise partners in the San Antonio area, and we are just so excited that they are here um, bringing the joy and the magic of Burns. So shout out to Caney. And location number 410 is Bowling Green. Bowling Green is in Kentucky, not Bowling Green, Ohio. And this is Justin Tammy Reed's second location. They're thrilled uh, to be bringing another location to their portfolio, but also to the state of Kentucky. And uh, West Nashville is their other location in Tennessee. So make sure you check out Bowling Green, Kentucky, West, Ten- uh, West Nashville, Tennessee. And we, uh, are keep- we keep growing. Everyone, we keep growing. And Nicole, you are the overlord um, in the, in the, <laughs> the overlord in, in of, of field support uh, for most of your career here. Recently, I'd shift into a more niche specific learning and development role. Uh, so, you know, we keep growing. We keep getting better with each location. Uh, what what have you learned about, um, you know, 310 three, three to 410? What is what has been one of the fundamental differences that you've seen from a from a business perspective going from 310 to 410? I think we've just got a lot more sophisticated as a franchisor and and our support has gotten a lot more prescriptive um, and. We've gotten a lot more buy in from our franchise partners um, to not accept the help, but like to work with us to to help them really grow their business and focus on um, the important things, right? Um, So often as business owners, and I was a franchise partner for 10 years, as you guys know, um, you're stuck in the tyranny of urgency Mm -hmm. um, and you're constantly putting out fires day to day. And I think um, the sophistication of our support has allowed a lot of our franchise partners to really step out of that tyranny of urgency and look forward and go crush some amazing goals. Um, And that's really underlined by our, our management methodology, the burnt operating system, which um, I am just a humongous fan of, uh, which I had had when I was a franchise partner. So, yeah, yeah. you've done a great job. So how about for you, Marianne, seeing you were at the OG location, right? In a parking lot and to, Mm -hmm. and to see our growth over these last 12 years and just, here, you know, location 409 and 410. Right. What has that done for you or meant to you? It's, it's mind boggling. You know (laughs) what I mean? So I remember going in and Devin obviously was training and I was like, holy shit. I don't, (laughs) I really was. I was like, oh my God, I don't know if I could do, you know, it was a, it was a lot for me just because I was so used to stepping on a treadmill. Yeah. And like I was telling Devin, thrown up some weights and that was about, I was in okay shape, but I went in there and I was like, my God, but then there was something about it. Um, and then when Hunters World started, I really, I just got immediately hooked. I'm, I'm not just saying that I'm very straightforward. Well, um, after 12 years, I would think yes, that, that yes. You, you've kind of proven that you're not just sitting here. You right, know, exactly. you know, we're not this, paying you to be here today. Right. <laughs> this is an elaborate 12 year plot yes. to come on the, yes. on the podcast. Right. Exactly. And it's just, it was, it, it's corny as this might sound. It's the vibe. It was, it was Devin and Ashley, um, Beasley and mm-hmm. all the others. Kyle was there, and it was just something that, you know, I was a little bit intimidated at first. But the more that I've told people this before, I've had a, an exhausting day. I feel like I'm gonna die. Mm-hmm. Day, you cuss during camp. We try not to, but yeah, you know, that kind of thing. But I've never had a bad day. Mm-hmm. I've always walked out of there feeling like man, I feel great. Yeah. And I think the magic of burn is that that permeates through every location. Yes. Uh, Yes. Because I was a member before I joined HQ um, in our TGK location way back in 2016. And I am not a fan of working out, never have been, even in the military. Like it it just was never my thing. And I have a Facebook post that pops up in my memories um, every year where I I said, I think I found my place mm-hmm. um, after yeah. just one workout at Burn. Yeah. I think I found my place. Yeah. And I never felt that way about a gym before. And the way that you guys have been able to bring that culture throughout these 410 locations, I think, is what, what makes Burn so amazing. amazing. Yeah. 
Well, that's why we do what we do at HQ, Marianne. It's it's for you. It's so that you can continue to fall in love and, and recommit yourself to something that you've been doing for 12 years. And we take that responsibility very seriously. And, you know, you represent here today, the 125,000 burn bootcamp members that we wake up every day and, you know, we, we serve our franchise partners, but our franchise partners and our trainers, they're ultimately serving you on the, on the floating floor. So, um, we're gonna, we're gonna share with you guys, Amber Todd's story from Harrisburg, North Carolina here in a moment. But after that, I really want to get Marianne and, and Nicole, your, your story too, and your reflection on like maybe, um, you know, your, your first day and then what it's meant to you since then. Like, you know, how has it really impacted your life, your family? And, you know, cause these are the things that this is why Nicole and I and Morgan wake up every day mm -hmm. and the rest of our team to put in that work mm -hmm. yeah, is, is because we fall in love with our members and we want to always do everything we can to keep their health and happiness and overall lifestyle maximized and happy and, um, and, and continuing to evolve and, and progress. So Amber Todd is uh, from Harrisburg, North Carolina. And you guys, I'm very, very excited because this is the first podcast in which we will um, actually introduce you to Amber Todd. Amber Todd has made a video for us and she has, um, uh, submitted it in. You can also submit your story into us at podcast at burnbootcamp.com or um, on uh, Devin or Morgan or Burn Bootcamp's Instagram. We will find it. And uh, But podcast.com is the best place. So thank you, Amber Todd, for submitting your uh, transformation video. And uh, without further ado, I'd like you to I'd like to introduce everybody to Amber Todd from Harrisburg, North Carolina. Let's hear your story and we'll make some comments on it. Hey, my name is Amber Todd, and I am a proud member of Burn Harrisburg here in North Carolina. I joined Burn in 2018 after having my second son. Um, I was just looking for something to help me get some of the weight off and gain some energy and confidence, and I was very grateful to stumble across Burn. Um, I, although I started in 2018, I, I really didn't start to take things super serious until January of 2021. Um, in those three years, I definitely went to the gym um, on a somewhat frequent basis. Um, I really enjoyed the community um, and I, I definitely enjoyed the workouts, but I was not consistent in my nutrition. Um, I wasn't taking advantage of the focus meetings and um, just really wasn't super disciplined. Um, but in January of 2021, I decided that it was time for a change. Um, so I started going to the gym consistently six days a week. Um, I started having focus meetings every three weeks and I really got my nutrition under control. So, um, you know, I started eating a high protein, low fat diet. Um, but the biggest change in my nutrition was, um, cutting out alcohol. I was a very, very big wine drinker. Um, I enjoyed drinking, um, not only on the weekends, but you know, with dinner and all of that. And, um, those extra calories definitely were not helping me. So I did cut out alcohol in 2021. Um, I've never felt better. Um, but, um, yeah, so I, burn has just completely changed my life. The, from the workouts again, to the focus meeting, the community is absolutely amazing. Um, my son plays travel baseball and we're constantly traveling to new places and, um, I get to enjoy my universal membership at all different locations. And I absolutely love that. Um, or if there's no burn nearby, then of course I have burn on demand that I can do in the hotels. But regardless, um, my day starts with burn and I'm so grateful to have found burn and to have the community that we have. Um, so yeah, that's my story. Thanks. Wow. Uh, Amber, thank you so much. That was amazing. Uh, listen, I want to, I want to hear your guys's comments on that. I have a couple, I picked up a few things on her video that, um, I think are really important to pull out and to help those who uh, might not, uh, you know, at this point in time, be taking it as seriously. You saw that 2018 to 2021 yeah. jump. 
and in a lot of members, you know, kind of join, might join the gym and it might take them a little time to get going. We'll talk about how to speed that up. Um, Morgan, what are your, what are your thoughts on that? And then you can kick it to Marianne. Yeah, I, I think I, I love how she shared how she, you know, it was a crawl, walk, run method to, you know, getting back in shape. And I, I just am so proud of her for saying that because it's okay. You know, it's okay if you just start the gym and maybe you're not ready for the nutrition component of it, or maybe you're not ready for, um, you know, going all in and removing certain things from your life. Like I, as much as I would want to encourage you to go all in as a former trainer and someone who obviously knows what's on the other side of that. I always love to just celebrate the movement and just getting back into a routine and doing something for yourself. And when you're ready and there's always going to be those pivotal moments in your life where either you're just sick and tired of being sick and tired, or maybe something happens where you gain a new perspective and you're like, okay, I'm ready to take this to the next level. Burn's going to be there to meet you where you're at. And I think this, this testimony is just a testament to that, that, um, we're here to help you however you want to be helped. And of course, we want to do as much as we can to, to build that confidence back and to, to give you the education and the tools to empower yourself to live the best version. So shout out to Amber for just, you know, sharing that entire journey and not just the very end of it, right? Not the end of it where you maybe saw more of the change in your body or the, cha- the weight loss, but the beginning of part of it too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I can relate with a lot what she just said, yeah. especially about the alcohol. I, I'm a, I'll admit it. I love red wine. Mm-hmm. So but <laughs> as I get older um, and then being at burn, definitely have limited trying to quit it all together. Um, but for me, just I kind of fluctuated. Um, I'm a little bit older. Than you guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, age is sure. just a number. <laughs> uh, yes, it is. But I was dealing with some hormone changes, yeah. which really has been, if people knowing my age, um, it's sometimes it's a struggle because you're like, what am I doing? I feel like I'm working out and all this other stuff. But um, burned through all of that has been the staple. Um, I'm really, I'm doing at least trying four, if not five a week. Um, it's just. Uh, and then really, again, with the burn meals, which I'm excited about, but also mm-hmm. just really trying to cut out all processed foods. It's amazing just reading probably this past year of just how shitty our food is. Yeah. You know, that's the sad thing. Um, but going back to burn, it's just, um, I'll relate it to when I was um, on patrol and working. Um, it's a stressful job. And I needed I needed something to to get my mind just where I could just the stamina, everything else. It really, really helped with all of that. And it still does. It's not physically number one, but if it's not for my mental health, Mm -hmm. a thousand percent, it is probably my number one thing. Why I love this place so much. Um, And again, like I said, I've never had in the, what is it? 12 years. I've never had a bad day. Yeah. That's that's impressive. And and I'm not just saying that I really walk out of there going, Man, that kicked my ass, but Mm -hmm. God, I feel great. Well, I think the thing is you probably have had a bad day coming in, but then walking out, you're like, okay. Well, you don't want to do it. You're like, man, I'm just, but then you've got Beasley or, you know, Hearn or somebody or Katie and that they're in your face and you're like, all right, I got to step up. And then you're like, thank you. Thank (laughs) you. I need that. You know, that's right. Yeah, for sure. I think Amber's story is really relatable. Um, You know, for me, since 2016, I've gone back and forth and back and forth. And one thing I love about walking into burn is it doesn't matter where I am on that roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I can still, you know, step in and modify what I need. And I think the thing I love absolutely the most is there's never judgment, right? There's not from people on the floor, not from trainers, not from anybody you come as you are and you do what you can. Um, and <laughs> trainers always kind of make fun of me because all of our trainers asks, do you have any injuries? Right. And my whole right side is a hot mess express. I like to tell them cause it's really like head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Yeah. Um, and I mean, if I have to, I can do burpees on a, on a plyo box. If I can't do burpees because I'm feeling, you know, I've got a migraine or I'm feeling kind of vertigo, like I don't do burpees. Mm-hmm. And that kind of, adjustment and acceptance has been crucial 
um, mm-hmm. during a lot of my of my journey, no matter what part of it I'm on. Yeah. Yeah, I love that, Nicole. Just talking about uh, the the fact that you can show up and be who you are and work as hard as you can and sweat and snot all over yourself and <laughs> grunt and do all these things and everyone else is doing it. And it, it actually makes you more of a part of the community when you're in there working hard and, and being vulnerable because it's such a safe space. And one thing that stuck out to me on Amber's story is alcohol. And this is very near and dear to my heart uh, because my family has historically been alcoholics. And so, you know, I have the proclivity to also be obsessed with things and so I have to really watch my alcohol intake. And so what, re- what helps me is understanding. And um, Morgan mentioned education. So it helps me really to understand what alcohol is and how it affects our body. And so the a- alcohol is toxic. And we all know this. It's not good for you. It never will be. It's not going to, there's no studies that are going to come out that says like, you know, red wine is good for you because it has resveratrol and grapes from grapes in it. It's not going to be the case. <laughs> okay. It's, it is. It's, I know, I know, dreams. I know. We got to get the, it's the journalists out there trying to get y'all to click on their, <laughs> click on their uh, articles so they can get a promotion in their job. All right. So the liver is the body's main detox, detoxification mechanism. So when the liver assesses that there's toxins in the body, alcohol, it will, let's just use simple terms, it will overtake all of the liver's processing power. It will shut down metabolic processes elsewhere to break down the alcohol to get it out of the body because it's trying to protect you. This means that the liver temporarily stops uh, or slows down metabolizing fats, carbohydrates, proteins, and all the nutrients are rather than used used for energy are stored uh, as fat to be later uh, burned as energy. And this can lead to a less efficient calorie burn. And we know this is true because we all went to college and we all know what it's like to go to pita pit after a bender and (laughs) then you eat pita pit and you wake up the next day and pita pit is now on your waistline. And it's like, how did I gain five pounds? I only ate two pita pits last night. Only two. Only Only two. two. (laughs) But you did it also after, uh, you know, 2,000 calories of alcohol in the prior four hours. And so- this is why, everyone, this is why it's dangerous to have a glass of wine a night, right? Because this means that you're constantly yeah. shutting your metabolism down. And if you, like uh, Amber mentioned and like Marianne mentioned, as soon as you take breaks, I'm not saying never drink alcohol. I'm saying, can, can we limit it to like three drinks a week yeah. and preferably on the same day? That way you're giving yourself six days to then renormalize uh, the, the metabolism. And it happens pretty quickly. And, and alcohol burns fast. Yeah. So as soon as the alcohol is done, and the liver processes it, cleans it up, it's ready to go you know, for, the, for the next meal. But if, it's, if you're eating super clean and then you're, you're sabotaging yourself if you're putting you know, one simple glass of wine at the end of the night, like try something different if you need to take the edge off. Try something non-caloric um, like CBD oil or something like that. Do something else, you know, to take your mind off of it. Um, we can stop at CBD oil, but there's plenty of things that you could do. Bes- I mean, there is, and it's, yeah. and it's real. Yeah. That And alcohol, to me, is a crazy, crazy, it's a crazy situation because it is one of the most toxic, potent, devastating, familial, ruining, demonstrative things on the planet, substances on the planet. It kills more people than almost everything else Yet it's the most socially accepted and um, the most the most widespread of all of the substances, and it is one of the most harmful if you just look at the statistics. So, well, it's tied so much into careful. our social structure. Be careful. is part of the problem, yeah. right? So, um, I I love that there are some things in Charlotte right now. There's a movement for like non-alcoholic bars mm-hmm. um, and non-alcoholic social meetups because when you think about it, celebrations remembrances they're all tied to alcohol and it's so hard to break out of that structure yeah it really is i gave it up for a while and i agree it's it's a challenge you know you feel 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 peer pressure or you even feel like do i even want to go to this event then you end up not you know being social at all sometimes and it's definitely a journey yeah. mm-hmm. of like learning yeah. how to be able to just go to an event that has alcohol around you and still carry on a great conversation and enjoy yourself I mean, I always try to think about the sleep I'm going to get. Like, you're going to get a really good sleep last yeah. night or <laughs> this night if you don't drink because yeah. that's how I see alcohol impacting me the most is, is through my sleep. I, When I do drink, it's I end up waking up a lot more frequently and 
even feeling like hot, getting some hot flashes. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. I don't like right. that. But anyways, all right. So thank oh. you, Amber. And uh, just as a reminder for anybody listening, we love hearing these stories. Uh, we love video submissions, especially so we can share them with our audience. So uh, reach out to Devin and I or Burn Bootcamp on social media, or we're going to make sure we'll link, um, you know, one way to get a hold of us. But we want to hear your story, especially through video. So the rest of this time uh, that we have with you all today, we're going to really dive into both Marianne and Nicole's experience here on 9-11 Remembrance Day and reflect um, and just take them. We have to take a moment to pick our heads up every once in a while and appreciate this amazing country that we live in. It's, I mean, America by far is the best country on the planet. You can go to all the other countries. It's not even close. Our worst city is 100x the best city elsewhere. And I know we have our issues. We have our problems. We have a democracy that's that's uh, made to clean up issues. And so far, it's done a great job historically. And, but we've, we, you know, I hope that today on 9-11, that it's a, a time where you can, unify with those people that you might have indifferences with. Here's why I love America, because I grew up in poverty. And this is one of the only countries in the entire world that you can grow up in poverty, you can grow up on welfare, you can, you can be placed into a situation without determining those circumstances yourself. That situation doesn't have to define you. It doesn't have to uh, preclude your destiny and you have the freedom to actually break free from the chain of the family that you were born into and with your own decisions based on the constitution, based on the declaration of independence and all the statutes and documents that make up our democracy, you have the legal right to go out and to make a name for yourself and to break that chain. And not only break the chain, but you can literally evaporate the chain. I went from being on welfare for more years in my life than I've actually not been on welfare to creating an organization that is um, impact. It's one of the biggest uh, uh, companies in our space. And like, I, this was all because we have this platform in America where we're able to make the decision to, to say, I want to be something more than what I was handed. Uh, I'm going to play the cards that I'm dealt, but the table that I'm playing on is one where you can play any hand that you can possibly conceive. And the four walls of our country from coast to coast, um, from Canada to Mexico, it, I mean, it is the most amazing. It's this right now is the most amazing country in the most amazing time in the history of all the world. In the history of all the world, there's never been a better time to be alive in a better country with more rights, with more freedom. And it's because of the people, this men in service women like Nicole and Marianne that give us the opportunity to protect that freedom and that allow people like me to, to build a business. And so my brother uh, is, uh, was in the Navy, Navy veteran, still works for the government. Uh, he's in logistics at the Federal Center in Battle Creek, Michigan, helping the ships all across the world get the parts that they need. And Nicole knows that world very well. And listen, I just want everyone to know that Burn Boot Camp and, and America, like we have this amazing relationship where I want our company to be a representation of what's possible in this amazing um in this amazing uh, nation that we have. And so I'll start by uh, asking Nicole, and we could ask Marianne and, and Morgan, you and I can really kick it back here. And any questions that come to mind, please just go ahead and, and throw them at, um, at Nicole and Marianne here. But I just would start by, we talked about our 9-11 impact stories, but how, how has just in general, how has service impacted your life, Nicole? I feel like service is my purpose. Um, between the Navy and parenting mm -hmm. and, um, you know, burn, even though I, what I'm doing isn't necessarily directly impacting a member, what I do allows franchise partners to directly impact members. And that to me is is so much service. Um, there, There's no greater service than helping somebody be healthy and live a long life and be the best version of themselves that they can be. Um, and I think that that just, it was reinforced in the Navy. I think it started with my parents and the values that, that they gave me. Um, but you know, it was really solidified in the, in the Navy and, and just carries on through now. What about you, Marianne? So I was, 
I never intended on being a police officer. I had an ex-boyfriend that went in. <laughs> and I remember I was working at Belk, hated it. And I was going to UNCC and I just was like, I don't know if I could do this anymore, you know? And so anyway, he went in and I kind of evaluated it. And after a year, I, I put an application in. And it's, you know, it was such an eye-opening thing when I first became one. It's just, it kind of opened you to the, how the, uh, the world, that's how some people actually live. I worked um, in mostly minority neighborhoods, low income, and loved it. Um, I think I was really good at it. Um, I think, um, it just, especially towards the end of your career, you really get to really understand how, why some people are in the situations that they're in and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. You definitely, um, gain some empathy. Um, but it's, I, I have no regrets. I mean, I love that people are like, especially when being a cop got a really bad name and just, you know, you're kind of villainized and I still did it with my head up and loved it. I think most of the community that I were in loved us. Um, I really related to a lot of them. A lot of them, I got to know their families and that sort of thing. And I don't think people realize it could go on and on, but you know, cops just aren't out there locking up people. I can't tell you how many clothes and food and I like, I, you know, bought for, people along with my coworkers, it's just a lot more it involves a lot more of that but um it's just I think it's just made me a better person to be honest with you so and you were you were um yeah and, and on the force for about 30 30, 30 years? years okay so mm -hmm. 30 years so obviously there was a pre and then a post burn and and yes. when you're talking about how your training uh had impacted you and your ability to serve Talk to us about that, because I would imagine, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I would imagine that just the the physical strength yeah, manifests sure. itself into mental uh, toughness, emotional toughness. You know how how does how does the training impact the the career from both a, a, a mental and a physical standpoint to make you better? A thousand percent. I real I told Devin earlier that I wish you guys were around 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and we, you know, and as police, like we have, I have many friends that will train at the academy and they're, they're more towards the CrossFit, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but it was up to your own. And again, I've already said this, that about just getting on a treadmill and just kind of half ass it. Um, mm -hmm. But being, when I entered into burn and just getting that push and then feeling more confident, about my strength and just how I felt. Um, it definitely ties into, it tied into the job. Um, uh, you know, you have to deal with uh, chaotic situations and your, your adrenaline is going up and down, up and down. So with just feeling like I felt good and, and burn is giving me that strength because I was never really a big weight person. Mm -hmm. And so working with the weights was huge for me. Um, and then having to deal if it had to get, I'll be honest with you, if it had to Physical. get down and dirty. Yeah. You know, I, you know. All right, Marianne, I, spill the beans. Because, <laughs> because, yeah, because, because there's a situation that you can remember that you were in, you were in the field, you were doing your yeah. duty, you was post burn, yeah. you were feeling strong and you just like did something one day. You like took down a perpetrator <laughs> and like <laughs> just put him in a headlock and was like, hey, you better not rob that old lady. You know, <laughs> like you did something like that. I know it. Well, a lot of it is just like, if you had to chase somebody, yeah. I was like, oh my God, get, get in my car, you know. <laughs> but, but in Bird, I felt like obviously had gained that endurance. Um, obviously, you know, the older I got, um, Maybe I would use my car a little bit more, but, <laughs> but yes, for sure. There was, there were times where like, I'll give you an example. Somebody was high. I was high in crack and, um, it was myself and three others. And I grabbed on the legs cause you just kind of held it on. But, um, just knowing that and feeling like I was at least strong enough. Yeah. Um, definitely. Um, I, I just can't say enough about it, how much it really changed, especially work. You're still working. There, there's an ad that just popped in my head. It's like Marianne sprinting around the building, and then we cut <laughs> to her just running down the street. Full, Listen, I'm slow though. Yeah. Listen, full, I don't full out, just like go. Yeah, I'm speed it up a little. Yeah. Yeah. I still remember we used to call it Killery. Okay, the the 
the hill here. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So and then and Devin would be like, when do the auto oh, no, we'll play song? I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was but it it definitely really for especially for me. I mean definitely it's a physical physical job. So it's I can't tell you how much it's um really helped me out. So why didn't you start at Cooner? <laughs> I don't know. I think we were in college. <laughs> Sorry, Marianne. Right, yeah. <laughs> if we could go back, okay. we we would. We would we would start it sooner. But how about, you know, the impact that Burn has had when you think about your coworkers or just the people you were able to influence because you were influenced by Burn? Like, did that help to have maybe some of that mental strength that you needed your your partner to borrow at times? Yeah, for sure. Um it's uh I'm trying to think of an example maybe um but like a lot of our especially when I was in patrol a lot of it was dealing with domestic violence mm. so um it, sometimes just uh not so much the physical aspect but the mental um you would have to just Remain calm, obviously, um, yeah. but just really kind of take control of the scene and feeling better about yourself, feeling that you were, you know, that you felt good, that you were feel like you were in shape or whatever. Mm -hmm. I know that may sound crazy to some people, but when no, you're out on the you street, confidence. Yeah. 100 percent, that's it's it was huge. So yeah. knowing that um, when you're out on the scene or when I was out on the scene, that feeling that just and people do you walk mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. You know, and then mm -hmm. you definitely there's been a, a study where somebody who killed a cop and said, why did you kill him? Because he he looked like shit. He didn't have that confidence. They they had their head down or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. tying back into burn, um, just feeling like, you know, I was kind of doing this yeah. kind of thing, you know, yeah. so, so that gave you an for edge. sure. Gave you yeah. edge for yeah. sure. And, and Nicole, you you had a uh, different version of boot camp. I'm, I'm assuming that uh, you have to compare it to burn. So, you know, when you, if you could zoom yourself back to uh, basic training, to those days, like when, how would you compare the training for a military to get us ready to defend our country against uh, maybe a burn boot camp where we are not so much defending our own country, but defending our own familial health and happiness? Well, the similarity that I actually like is you just show up and they tell you what to do. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, you know, the but also the routine of it all. Um, being an officer, I didn't have to go through, you know, like basic, basic training. Um, but, you know, it's just a lot of cardio, just cardio and cardio and cardio, um, which, you know, you need you need for that endurance. Right. Um, right. When and I can remember being deployed. We would go, I was on an aircraft carrier on the Kitty Hawk, um, which is now deployed. You got your hat? Um, I do. The so Kitty I Hawk? was I was part of Carrier Air Wing 5, and we were deployed um, on the USS Kitty Hawk. We were part of the four deployed naval forces. Um, so we were stationed in Japan. This hat's been through some games. <laughs> that been through, it's that been, hat is almost as old as you are, yeah, David, I think. Yeah, um, it looks so. old. I'm glad I don't look like this. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, looking, yeah. I'm looking clean. <laughs> That's why it's not on my head. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You should see my baseball hats, too. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. Um, but you know, we would just go to the hangar bay and there were just treadmills set up and sometimes I would go to the weight room and you just don't know what to do. Um, mm -hmm. and so I, I wish there was something like burn on demand that we could, you know, shoot out to our, to our ships and to our forward bases to just give them that break from the routine, but still give them that structure that the military is so famous for. Right. Like, right. um, but I think, you know, with both both require discipline and that mental toughness um, to get through because there are certainly days on the floating floor where I'm like, I do not want to be here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, Second that. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then, and then you get going and you know, it's hard, but like Marianne said, it, you know, it, mm -hmm. it builds that thing. And I feel like that's the same thing with military service is like, there's a lot of, there can be a lot of anxiety going into it at first fear even. Um, but once you get going and you start building that confidence to know that you've got it um, and you're surrounded by your community, um, you you feel like you can go do anything. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. For sure. I think that takes us to our last question too, that I wanted to ask about anyone that's listening to this, that maybe is thinking about going into the military or thinking about going into law enforcement, what advice would you give them? Um, 
definitely get in shape. Go to burn. <laughs> <laughs> Go to burn. Absolutely. I, I just was at the academy the other day and there was a, a new rookie class and I was I, I was looking at some of these recruits and I was like, did you not do anything? <laughs> I mean, I was just shocked. Anyway, uh, but it's and also the mindset. I, I just I'm really I hit 10 year mark on my career and I got just real negative. Mm. Just, you know, just screw this, that, you know, and that kind of thing. And just about life in general, the job. And I really had, I just, one day I listened to myself and I thought, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. And so I just did a complete 180 and mindset. So it's positive, just positive mindset is just huge. Um, I don't want to be around you if you're just going to sit there, bitch and moan. Yeah. So if you were thinking about the police force, firemen, medic, military, I just, it's just have that mindset. Yeah. Um, and definitely um, get into shape. It's they're they're all amazing careers. You yeah. know, they might get some negative just because of what's happened in the last couple of years, but it's it's an I would never change anything. It's an amazing career. Well, yeah, yeah. go ahead. I was just gonna say I, I completely agree. It's just like we tell our members, you can do hard things. Yes. Um, yeah. and you never really realize how hard <laughs> you can go until you're in those situations. And so Believe in yourself um, is, I think, the best advice I can I can give because you can do hard things and you're amazing no matter what you've been through in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. great advice. Yeah. You guys, this has been such a great just opportunity for us to reflect and remember 9/11. Um, you know, I hope that you are able, everybody out there, to reach out to somebody in your life today on this day when we remember, whether it's whether that individual was directly impacted by, or indirectly impacted by 9-11. Um, either way, it's, it's, it's about camaraderie and unification and remembering all of the people that sacrificed their lives for us to be, for us to maintain uh, a strong border and for us to maintain our independence as, as a country. And so if you did nothing else today to celebrate 9-11, what you can do to remember is just text somebody who's close in your life that you maybe haven't texted them in a while and, mm -hmm. and, you know, tell them, um, you know, how much that you appreciate them and, um, maybe put your differences aside with somebody else. Like you can celebrate remembrance day, not celebrate rather, but you can remember in a, in a way that is, um, symbolic to the actual day. And it's not just about saying, you know, Hey, where were you on nine 11? You know, do you remember where you're at on 9-11? It's about thanking and giving gratitude for this amazing country that we're in the, that allows us to build these relationships with whoever we want, whenever we want. And so use Remembrance Day to remember the great country we live in, to remember the people that fight for it, and to remember those people in your life that you might hold grudges against that, you know, is outdated. We need to, we need to update that relationship. So that's what today is all about, everyone. Uh, we appreciate you all listening and, and being here. Remember, the Burn Boot Camp meals are out, by the way. So go get those right now. Get your 12-pack. Uh, you can customize the auto ship online. So go do that. Morgan, anything else before we before we in camp? Uh, in camp. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, we're going to, yeah, this is the mental reps. We're going to yeah. end the camp for the mental I, reps today. I think that's it. We wrapped it up. Thank you, Nicole and Marianne, again for being here. And thank, thank you. you guys Thanks for so listening and subscribing and uh, being a fan of our boot camp. So here we go. Two claps on two. One, two. Bye, guys. <laughs>